personal opinion is, for, and, and you've got to nuance, and that's the whole point of the book. You've got to adapt to whatever the situation is. So there's, we, we are on purpose not ideological. My own opinion is, for example, California has, in essence, too much democracy. In the name of democracy, you, you paralyze the system. You can't make the long-term decisions and the long-term investments, uh, whatever they are, uh, intellectual infrastructure, physical infrastructure, environment, etc., etc., because there are so many opposing uh, groups that will stop things. Opinion on Europe is exactly the opposite. You, the, the, the idea of Europe uh, was constructed, in essence, sort of by elites. It was constructed in a way where it gave... A, a, the, you know, a degree of power, and it transferred certain um, common goods, in this case, in theory, a currency, to a center, but it didn't finish the building. It didn't create a, um, a, a fiscal um, uh, capability, it didn't create a, a financing capability. So these things don't exist. So if, if you're going to have a, 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 a real uh, functioning European um, uh, structure, you need to uh, bring these things in. Well, at the end of the day, uh, looking at the history of Europe, that's probably a parliamentary system. And, um, and today, uh, you, as you pointed out, you've got a number of different institutions like the Commission, like the Council, but especially, um, let's say, the, the, the Commission, which are a representative that nobody identifies with in Europe, nobody really knows uh, in Europe as a general public, who have been put in there uh, on a consensus basis and tr don't really represent citizens. So I think in Europe you have the exact opposite. You don't have enough democracy. If Euro European citizens and, and, and um, parties in different uh, countries would have been engaged in popular elections, would have identified with the people who they sent to Brussels and would have identified with the issues, I think we'll, we'd be a lot further along, yay or nay, on a lot of uh, what would have um, you know, built a functioning uh, European system. This is a moment of history for Europe. That's what it is. And um, I'm appalled by the sort of illiterate skepticism of many people in this country about European Union. And I think this is a moment in which you could see a new Europe emerging, and that's that we're all, all three of us, whatever else we might disagree on, are committed to try and push that process forward. But I think it can't just involve traditional elements of democracy. I think we should talk about, not in a British you know, insular context, but returning some powers back to nations, not just taking more powers away and we should produce a more flexible, adaptive kind of uh, social media friendly, if you like, form of European <coughs> Union. So I think we've got to do a lot of rethinking, but basically emerged, as Nicholas said, as a non-democratic institution. And now we have not only to democratize it, but of course to drive it forward on many levels too. <coughs> but this is our opportunity. I think this will happen could go wrong any day, but I think it will happen, and then the UK will have to make a decision. If the euro is saved, if the eurozone becomes, again, reasonably prosperous, if, as I hope, the European Union can have a different model of development, a more environmentally sensitive model of development, <coughs> excuse me, than either the United States or China, that, that's what I would aim for, I think this is a time at which it could happen. And at that point, the UK will be so sidelined that we would have to have a referendum to decide in or out, I think, at that point. 